Today I'm creating the proclamation wall as seen in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Let's get started. For this video, I made this sheet of proclamations by going what I could find online. They are available on my website to download for free. I will also offer a digital file for laser cutting the frames that I'm making in this video. And there's also an option to purchase the frames cut if you don't have access to a laser cutter yourself. I start by cutting out all the proclamations with a ruler and exacto knife. I've printed these on heavy cardstock. I've had this idea for a while and I'm finally making it a reality. Now this is how I made the frames for the proclamations. I've added the poster size into the Xtool program and made the design based on that. I've made a larger frame around it and then created the roof part that goes on top of the frame. I also created the lock as that is one of the crucial details of this project. It is all in the details. This is the second project I'm creating mainly using the Xtool P2 laser cutter and I have to say I really love this machine. The detail it can go to is immaculate and it's really fast as well. If you want to know what kind of products I use during this video, everything is linked in the description box below so you can purchase your own. The Order of the Phoenix is my favorite Harry Potter movie in the franchise. It has the best sub-villain played immaculately by Imelda Staunton. She was just perfect for this role. And I absolutely love the end battle between Dumbledore and Voldemort. The CGI in that scene is just amazing. I'd love to know what your favorite scene is from any of the Harry Potter movies and what do you like about it so much? This is where I create the lock. It's just a circle with other circles added and then merge them together. And you can see how fairly easy it is with some basic shapes to get this shape just right. It is really, really tiny. And I was really impressed by how this printer was able to cut this out. This video is sped up three times, but you can see it's fairly fast. And this is the engraving part. And you can see that it engraves first and then it will do the cutting unless you tell it otherwise. And the little dots that you see there at the end, this is where it now is cutting out the locks. It is really, really tiny, but I seriously, I am really impressed by the detail it can go to. And here we have the frame. It is a massive, it's actually a board that is used for spin art or just painting. It's a wooden board. And I cut out 20 of these proclamation boards and locks. And then I can put the proclamation in like so. And I will also put a piece of acetate on top of that. Now for the back wall, I have a few of these stencils and I think this one is the best one to use. And I use this speckle paste, which is already mixed. I cut off the sides of the stencil just to make it lie flush against the sides and then apply the speckle with a palette knife. And I repeat that process until the entire wall is done. And then I'm going in with this dark brown paint. I spray it with some water and then I can paint the entire background a dark brown. I will have to lighten this up a little bit. So with some lighter paint, I just dry brush until I'm happy with the result. And for the edges and the entire frame, I'm just going in with some black acrylic paint. Now I also wanted to add the entrance door to the great hall to this frame, just to make it a complete image. It was a little bit tricky to figure out how to make that door shape. So with a teardrop and a square, which I merged together, I got this door shape. 
Then I trace another edge around the outside of that and put in some frames for the detail. And these dark lines that you can see here is the engraving part and all the rectangle frames that you can see on the inside side for the details, they are all scored except for the one on the inside, which is a dark blue, which is completely filled in and they will be engraved as well, just to give it that more depth in that door. But this is all done with the shapes inside the program. Now for the detail on top of the door, there's actually something else in the actual doors, but I wanted to go with this Hogwarts crest. So I grabbed an image from the internet, removed the background and here I can engrave it. And here you can see Xtool do that. I added some flourishes on the side. So this is one of those flourishes and then it will move on to that Hogwarts crest. It was a little bit hard to film because you know, this thing it's, it's in the way and you cannot really see past it, but here we have it. This is the Hogwarts crest being engraved and I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. And with a little bit of paint, you can really bring out those details as well. Here we have the doors all done with that crest at the top and the flourishes and all the details. And it, it's not a very elaborate door, but it's elaborate enough for this project. I also made some of these arches to go around it. Um, so the door is one layer, then the next layer is two, the next one's three, and then four and then five layers of wood. I'm just gonna glue all the layers together and then glue them around the outside of the door onto the frame. Let me tell you a little bit about the educational decrees. During the 1995-1996 school year, the ministry were no longer impressed by the standards at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry under the headship of Albus Dumbledore, because they thought he was lying about Lord Voldemort's return. They created new educational decrees to suppress the outlaw behavior of which the ministry did not approve, some of which would outright expel the students found to be in transgression of. In truth, however, they were just an excuse to strip Dumbledore of his headship of the school and give it to Umbridge. Minerva McGonagall was shown to strongly dislike them as when Umbridge pulled out a new decree, she exclaimed, not another one. Educational decrees were even used to control the teachers and limited the help they were able to give to the students, including giving no advice on anything that was not connected to their subject. When Harry created Dumbledore's army, she eventually created Educational Decree Number 24, which says all student organizations, societies, teams, groups, and clubs are henceforth disbanded. These educational decrees were abolished when Albus Dumbledore and Harry Potter proved Lord Voldemort's return. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, when Fred and George Weasley fled from school after releasing a torrent of enchanted fireworks, one of them took a form of a dragon and destroyed all of the educational decrees hanging from the walls while chasing Umbridge, causing them all to shatter and fall down, much to the cheers of the students. This must be my favorite part in the movie or one of my favorite parts in the movie, because I already said that I have a favorite part of this movie, but I really, really enjoy this movie. And this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me create this proclamation wall. If you made it this far into the video, make sure to let me know by leaving a pink emoji in the comment section down below. All my social media can be found in the description box as well. And if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And of course, become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.